What's up, guys? Mystic Zach here. Welcome back to the fight, guys. I'm here joined with my co host, former UFC champ, current UFC Hall of Famer, Sugar Shot Evans. How are you doing, sir? What's up, Zach? What's up, man? Big weekend of fights, man. It was a big weekend of fights. Yeah. Uh, MMA takes another L. Oh, man. Come on now. Happened again. 0 and 5. Come on now. 0 and 5. Come on now. I know. I know. I know. Listen, Zach. Listen, listen, listen. It's not MMA, okay? Like, like you can't put this on MMA. You're not gonna lay this. What's happening with these, with the Jake Paul and, and these MMA? You're not gonna lay this on MMA's doorstep, all right? This, these, these fighters, they were represented. I mean, they they are MMA legends, but of course, they don't represent the whole entire game. And I mean, listen, Jake is not doing it to somebody around his age like that in MMA. It's so funny. Is for years, they're like, oh, if boxers up in the cage, they get killed. But MMA guys can hang in with boxers. And then you get a Disney kid who trains for a couple years and beats all the best. Yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 I can't call it, man. I, I, I don't even know what it is. The truth of the matter is, I mean, look, Nate has never fought. He never, he never boxed before. You know what I'm saying? He said he's part of Andre Ward. <laughs> he's so good. He outboxed Connor. He just damn near knocked out Leon Edwards, <laughs> what? Year and a half ago, yeah. a year ago. Okay, Zach. Listen, there's no excuses. Okay, there's there's no excuses. Okay, there's no excuses. I I have nothing. Ten I have rounds nothing. too. Like they ten, requested ten rounds. Ten Jake rounds. was like, cool. I I. You know what? You know what? Was Jake won the tenth. You know. You know what it is for me? It's like. I just can't. I can't understand it. Like I I, I truly watch the fight and I'm and I'm having a hard time, understanding like what is he doing. That's just causing these guys to just fight like this. I, I don't understand Punching it. Punching them really hard in the face. No way. Like, first of all, he's wearing boxing gloves, right? He's wearing boxing gloves. And, and the power in a boxing glove is nowhere near what you feel wearing a four-ounce glove with a, a, a wrap underneath it. So the hardness of the punch is not it. I just, I just, can't, I just can't understand it, man. Keeps dropping them, though. He dropped them. He dropped them. Look. But here's the thing about it. Nate almost had him in some trouble, man. Nate, Nate, Nate started to drown him a bit. No, no, no. no. Nate, Nate started to thing, drown him a right? bit. And he stay cool, right? Yeah. Overcame it. Won the 10th, which is hilarious, right? I, this cardio is, what, three times better than McGregor's? Yeah, at least. I mean, yeah. he, he's got a great cardio. Yeah, and it's crazy, the cardio that comes with him being huge and throwing power punches. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, the thing, the thing is that uh, he had great cardio. He didn't have the power, though. He didn't have the power. He didn't have the punching IQ to really make that cardio count for something. I felt at times there were opportunities for him to just really get just with the basic. Start being persistent with that jab. Keep the jab in Jake's face as you're moving him forward. That sets out a panic. That makes your guy start throwing punches out of his sequence, out of his turn. That's when you start catching him in the middle of throwing those punches he wasn't ready to throw. So he just didn't do enough in that regard. Um, Jake was able to, to land some big shots that made him contemplate a lot, made him really respect the range and respect the power. Uh, and honestly speaking, Jake is getting better, man. Yeah, big improvements from the Tommy fight. He, he's, he's, get, he's got a lot better, and, and, I, and I say that because he, he still threw the overhand right, but it was hitting really well, and it wasn't the only punch he was going for. He didn't find himself just swinging for the overhand yeah, right. and he wasn't over his feet. He, he wasn't, wasn't over his bounce. feet. His, yep, and uh, even when he got tired, he did a really good job of having a good poker face and hiding how tired he was because in past fights, if he would have had that pressure on him, he would have yeah. not been able to keep that game face, but he kept his game face, he kept moving, and he kept even active when he was dead tired. And uh, he, he's doing some things, man. I feel like, you know, he's showing that he may not be a boxer at that level, but he can definitely box. Yeah, yeah. His footwork, mechanics, balance, all I think much improved from the Tommy fight. He threw 500 punches over 10 yeah. rounds as a big dude. So... Um, definitely a lot being shown in that department. I think Nate Diaz, if he fought any other influencer, would have caught them slipping and beat them up. He, yeah, he might have. He might have. But, you know, it, I don't think any of the other ones are with any of that pressure. I don't. 
I, I don't. I, I don't either. That that pressure is hard. Especially over ten rounds. That pressure is hard to deal. Ten with. rounds is a lot. Yeah, it you is. You haven't been in there. Like people that haven't boxed, it, three minutes feels like thirty. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To fight ten rounds in your eighth pro fight, like it's killer. Yeah. It's killer, and um, to, to be, to be able to move forward like that, and to, you know, catch him here and there, and put that pressure on him, but then, you know. Find a way to still make it interesting when we knew it was a kind of a lopsided fight. When we watched them box and we watched what, what Jake was able to do consistently, yeah. it was kind of lopsided. But Nate made it interesting in the end by being able to kind of let his cardio play yeah. a part in no, it by and, pushing you know, the pace. No, he did. And I don't think Nate has you know, anything to hang his head on, right? Yeah, no. When, I, I feel like with Nate, um, the fact that he gets a chance to do it again, potentially, with the PFL fight oh, in no. MMA. Please no. I mean that Can that we stick to boxing, please. Wait, wait, Jake? wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're against that. No, I'm not for that. No. Why? I, bro, I can't how do you defend Nate doing like a standing guillotine or getting him up against the cage and I, I will say this. I will say Jake seems to be a very, very fast learner. He's like a sponge. Yes. He almost seems like a sponge, right? Very excited kid, yes. really likes what he's doing. So I I'm I'm to the point now where I'll say I'm gonna stop doubting this kid what he can and can't do. No, I'm not. I just would rather stick with the boxing. I would rather stick with the boxing too. But I mean, the, the truth of the matter is he might have something. Yeah. With MMA, I you mean, know, he does have love, that wrestling pedigree. Yeah, I think if he actually trained for a while, I think him and McGregor would be so cool in MMA. Now you're talking crazy. What? I think Nate's a harder fight than McGregor, right? Dude, way I, bigger. I, I would I would I would say I would, I, I would say that. Nate would be tougher based on his grappling aspect, yeah. but when it comes to that power, I think that Jake would be in trouble dealing with the power of Connor. Connor, yeah. Connor has some crazy power. But he's tiny. Yeah, I know. That's what makes it even crazier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We have to ask Nate who it's harder, Jake or Connor. I, I mean, I, I, you know, the thing is, I, I, I just, um, I'm just finding myself in a place where. I, I have to give this guy his props, man. I have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I kind of flirt along with the idea of giving him his full props, but I, I got to give him his props, man. He, he's, he's, he's really done well for himself as a boxer, as a competitor, but even carving out this space in the boxing uh, industry like this. We appreciate it. The other thing I think was making Nate Diaz pause, take breaks, turn his, you know, do his thing, the body shots. Yeah. The right hand to the body was Nice. And MMA fighters don't throw body shots against Diaz brothers. I've never understood it. They yeah. always head on. They're literally zombies. You have to attack their body. Yeah. I mean, it, it, looked, it looked like a lot of those times where he was doing, like, the, the fake and that he was hurt. A couple of times, he might have really been hurt because his posture, even yeah. when he kind of acted like he was okay, still shown that he was kind of hurt. Yeah, that's their weakness, you know, body and legs. Yeah. Their head... Doesn't do anything. Yeah, They're literally I mean, zombies. Yeah, I, I truly believe, though, honestly, though, that um, with Jake, I think that he could be exciting in, MM, in, in MMA. But the truth is, he's got to get with a good team, a good team that with, with that has the ability to to really bring him through like a a very edible camp where he's able to pull out the most important details out of the fight game. Yeah, and obviously, you know, there'd be no wrestling offense, right? He wants to keep it on the feet. But as the guy transitioning, is he going to be comfortable enough on the feet to really be able to box that we should, right? Right. Or is he, he going to be terrified to get taken down? That's choked, the thing. The, the, range, the range is totally different. There's so many different aspects yeah. in MMA. It makes it very difficult to train for in a short period of time. I agree. It's a much harder sport to master than boxing. Yeah. But when it gets to the fine art of it, we haven't mastered it like we have boxing. There's no one on the level as a martial artist as there is Terrence Crawford as a boxer, right? We haven't seen that. Where uh, someone's mastered every art like he has in boxing and sweet science. I mean... Who, oh, I would challenge you to find someone. That's displayed the greatness that... In every aspect. There's like 30 different things you have to do in MMA. Yeah, but, but like Khabib's not striking perfectly. Like okay, he's John him. Jones. He can't box, dude. John Jones had he can box. He can box. Bro, put him in the ring with like a super low level heavyweight. He's gonna knocked out. That remains to be seen. That remains to be seen. His elbows but, but lethal. Based, but based on what we've seen in the octagon, 
No. He is. He can't box, bro. He boxes. DC bro. was outboxing him. He needs Popeyes. He's five foot eight. Mm. I'll, I'll say I'll say John Jones boxing may be the weakest part of his game. Bro, but, okay, who wins in a boxing match? You versus John Jones? I mean, John Jones. He's got the. He's, he got the. <laughs> he's not forty four years old, man. I'm like, like, yeah. In the pro, I mean, listen, listen. I've never seen him like pop someone with a like. He's always with his elbows. Yeah. I'll say I'll say this just for the sake of argument. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're not there. It's it's a new sport. Yeah. Boxing has been around for how long? 1800s? But that doesn't mean there's no masters in MMA, though. There are masters, but they haven't. It's not the sweet science. We, there's no floor. C- come on, dude. Everyone has at least one weakness. Mighty Mouse is the closest thing. Everybody has a weakness no matter what, though. E- 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 even Crawford has a weakness. What's his weakness? I mean... He punches too hard. <laughs> 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 no, the MMA is just such a new sport. There's so many different... And there's so many new metas and things coming out. It's just an evolving sport, which makes it more exciting. Okay. Um, love MMA. It's my thing, but just saying. Uh, harder to master is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. In a short period of time than boxing. Absolutely. Uh, moving on. It was a long night at the fights. And uh, afterwards, I couldn't sleep, right? No, adrenaline was pumping, like it was exciting and stuff. And uh, I put on San Hagen and Fawn, and it was great sleep aid. Oh, man. Oh, man. I passed right out like a baby. Listen, Corey San Hagen did what he had to do. Sometimes you go into a fight, and you got to make adjustments. Going into a fight, like being a war aircraft, and you're taking on some damage. You know, you may take... A wing may go out, you know, one of your gunners may go out, but whatever the case may be, you find a way to finish the mission. And sometimes you go in there and you got to figure out a way to, to get past a hurt hand or a messed up elbow or whatever you got dealing with, but you got to find a way to get it done. That's what he did. He did get it done. He asked was wrestling. Um, you, you hope, you wish it, it's more exciting than that. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I saw people calling it, like comparing it to like Islam or Habib. That was nothing like them. They hunt for finishes. Well, he, he, he's, he's working on that part of the game. Yeah. See, that's the thing about it. Like, that whole part of the game, that's a new wrinkle into his game. You know, I've never seen San Hagen shoot as great as he was. Those takedowns were really good takedowns. The time yeah, they number was all. We may not see the purpose of that performance right now based on that performance alone. But when you look at it, collectively speaking, and what that can do in the next few fights... I think he laid the groundwork for a level of his game that's going to be looked to implement in the coming fight. Yeah, he said, I, w- I want to wrestle strikers. I want to strike wrestlers, right? Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. And it makes sense. Not knocking him for that. Do you think his game plan against Umar was to wrestle and his camp just wanted to kind of flesh that out with this fight? Yeah, I think so. I think he spent that's a lot of time. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, I think he spent a lot of time uh, wrestling for, for Umar. And when you're in that mode, when you're, yeah. when you're constantly doing takedowns and training, even though you do have great stand-up, that's all you see. Yeah. You know, you just see the opportunities. Yeah. One thing that worried me was he let Rob Font take his back at one point. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, if you do that against Aljo, you're going to get choked out gonna again. Get yeah. You're going to get cooked. Yeah. going to get cooked. You're going to get cooked. This guy, he can't let guys take his back. I know. But, you know, also with the takedowns, you, you have to remember that, you know, Rothfun is one of the best strikers in the weight class, and he's got yeah, some, he's, he's got, got, got some striking. power too. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, he probably caught some punches and was like, you know what? Yeah. Let me let me lead this along. Well, I, in my head, San Diego is the best striker in the weight class. I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree. I love the way that he fights. I love the way that he finds his striking in motion. He does really good things. Yeah. A lot of good things. Well. Yeah, but there's so many savages there. You know, oh, yeah. and everything. So I, I understand the purpose. And I'm, I'm impressed with the wrestling ability. Hopefully in the gym they can work on just, you know, hunting for a finish. Hunting for a finish. Yeah, a little more exciting. Did yeah. you think it was like, what, what, what was your takeaway? Um, it, it wasn't the most exciting, but for me. Like, I'm, were I'm, you on your phone during the fight? Like, <laughs> like, like looking up, look, like, look, like look. when is the Nate Diaz-Jake walkout? <laughs> I was actually watching both at the same time. Um, but, you know, I. I, I'm, I'm a wrestler, so so I, I was looking at some of the technique. But the truth of the matter is, I did want to see it finish. I thought he could finish him. Yeah. Maybe he wanted more mat time in more the cage. Mat time, yeah. I don't know. Could be beneficial. I'm not knocking him, but yeah. Definitely no fight of the night bonus. No, no. But Tatiana Suarez, though, she could have gotten one. And it's so I've been saying this 
since we started the show, this girl is a future champ. Yeah. Been saying it every time, cover of fights. And she's back. Yeah, she's, she's back, back in full at, form. At, and at hopefully she gets... I, they're going to try to set up the China China matchup. Probably in China. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I hope to God she's next. Yeah, I hope so too. And, and, and what I like about her is the fact that she's not in a rush to get to that title. And that's something that you don't really see a lot with this new generation of fighters. Every single time they want a big fight, they want that title shot. Yeah. But they don't realize that how much in the process... You know, you get better. You get better yeah. in the process, and being patient with that process, making sure that you truly are one of the best in the weight class before you get there, is truly the biggest secret to having a great reign as champion, right? If I yeah. went through and I just trounced pretty much my competition, getting the belt. When I get the belt, I'm pretty much rematching everybody. I busted all the way getting through, so my run as a champ is a lot better. Not only that, she has the right mindset, but her skill set is so unique. Right, and yeah. I, I've made jokes about female fighting and whatever, and they're in gist. But her grappling is elite. Yes, it is. Beyond elite, right? Yeah. She's, I, to me, the best female grappler we've seen in mixed martial arts. Yeah. Kababe. She is. <laughs> she, she, no, 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 she is. Kababe. She's definitely Kababe. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I would say this. I would say in that fight, even though she looked very phenomenal with, with yeah. her, the finish and how she hunted it down and all things, I did see a bit, a bit of vulnerability on the feet. Yeah. I feel like she really needs to find a way to just kind of get comfortable there, you know, because the, these Chinese girls that she's got to fight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yan, I hope that's who pronounced her name. Yeah. Yan, excellent striking, like impressive stuff. No grappling. No ground. Yeah. Well, she's gotten better. She's gotten she better. Got, I've seen her get smashed on the ground. Yeah. I can't see her winning in Satiana. Well, Wei Li, on the other hand, is so damn strong and a monster on the feet. That's tough. Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. She's going to have to really, really, and I know you're talking about the striking. I don't think Wei Li is so damn good on the feet. I think I would drill grappling as much as possible, and that's how I'm going to win. Well, it's gonna be impossible to stand up with Whaley. She's so damn good. Yo, you know, you may not ha- be able to go tit for tat, but you yeah. gotta go enough tit for tat in order to make her forget. To close the gap, right? Yeah, because th- the whole thing with getting somebody down into your world and your wrestler is to engage in a stand up battle long enough where they forget and they throw caution to the wind because they engage in a striking battle. They forget you have the wrestling takedown, and then you go right underneath once you get in the engagement. What about Ben Askren? He didn't feel comfortable striking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mostly though. Yeah. yeah. Especially in 2023. You got to have more than one skill. Got to. Right? Um, you saw Paul Gregg had a lot better striking. You know? Yeah. Helped him a lot. So definitely agree. Switching gears here. Heavyweight boxing takes a big hit. Oh. We're supposed to see Anthony Joshua and Dillian White. Yeah. Dillian White pops. No offense. Didn't surprise me. He popped twice. He failed two Vada drug tests. Um... Boxing, usually not as punishing when it comes to this stuff as mixed martial arts, but I think they should be in this case. I really do. When he popped twice, and he had it in the past, they, they cleared him. He said it was a, tra- a training thing. If his training camp made him pop again, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. Is that believable to anyone? Um, so it sucks because... It, it does suck. I mean, as an athlete... Um... And, and being in a situation where you're in a camp and you got to take all these different kind of supplements and sometimes you get supplements from people that you trust that they know what they're doing. Um, at the end of the day, no matter what you put in your body, you have to make sure you do the checks and balances and make sure it is okay. Um, I, I, I can't, I don't want to come just straight accusing him, you know, but you know, I can see the impetus to want to, you know, take some kind of performance enhancer when you got to fight a guy like Joshua. And in reality, it happened you know, before with, with, yeah. with Big Baby Miller when he's going to fight Joshua, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I can understand that, you know, wanting to really seize that. But, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, I mean, if, if, you, if you start to go on that path and trying to, you know, find the, the, the shortcut – at the end of the day, you're, you're not going to find what you're truly looking for because what you're going to find is a truck, a crutch that you're not able to consistently use. Yeah, unless you have really good people like LeBron or someone. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> and we know Tyson Fury's popped as well. 
Yeah. You know, like the heavyweight division is rampant with PED use. It is. At yeah. this point, you might as well just say after drug testing, let's let them take whatever they want and get as big I as mean, possible. I mean, I've always, I've always been one to say yeah. after drug test. To be yeah, honest. I, I really don't care. No, I, I don't. Like care if either. we let Anthony Joshua and Dillian White take whatever they want and fight, it would probably be better. I mean, if they're both taking it. Yeah, it would be cool if they're both on EPO. Like, we'd probably get, you know, 12-round slobber knocker. Better, better performance. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it sucks, though. You know, it's a dangerous yeah. thing. Yeah. It is. Um, but, I mean, I, I was excited to see Joshua fight again. I was, too. You know? Dillian I mean, White is, um, I'm not saying he's a top five guy, but he's got a lot of power. Yeah. And it's someone that Joshua definitely has to be cautious of. And, you know, we've had questions about his chin, ability to take a punch after the Reese fight. It would have been a good marker if he did get hit with a clean left hook. Yeah. So, it sucks. so I just wonder what this opportunity or this situation brings for um, for Joshua. Like, where, where does I, it put I think, him? I think they're looking at Gerald Washington to step okay. in. But Gerald Washington, the same guy who got smashed by Charles Martin, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's better than nothing, you know? I think they're trying to get him. It seems like they're trying to get him ready to fight Deontay Wilder in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. It seems to be what would be the next fight. And Dillian White, not that he's similar to Wilder, but he's got that big-time power. So I think it would make people feel more confident Joshua heading into the Wilder fight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if he was able to take that power. Now, Joe Washington, not quite Dillian White. No. No, not at all. Not at all. Come on, White. What are you doing? You're tripping. Tripping, dude. Tripping. I know, man. And it's just English fighters now, too, man. I know. Like, we, we see... Connor Ben going to a testosterone doctor, and he pops. And then we see Tyson Fury with the same doctor. We see Tommy Fury with the same doctor. We see a whole bunch of them, and they're all been looking more jacked doctor, lately. And then we see Dillian White pop. It sucks. It what does. are we doing in the UK? Let's, it, let's get that it, under it, control. It really does. And when you're the age of Dillian White, you know you, you can't really afford to have no. These kind of side what did lines. they spend him two years? You cooked. Yeah, cooked. He got cooked. <laughs> uh, shout out to Broner. We, see, we had an MMA fight, and it's with two guys that I thought were cooked. Rafael Dos Anjos, Rafael okay. Dos Anjos okay. versus Vicente Luque. I didn't think Luque would be able to fight so soon. The last fight, he almost died. Yeah, it, it, it was a tough one. Yeah. That's bad, dude. Yeah, it, it was a tough one. But, you know. I can't believe he's back in there against RDA so soon. Well, I mean, here's the thing with Luque, man. I, I've trained with him since the Black Zillion days back in the day. And uh, he's. One of the toughest guys in the world. Of course. Room. One of the toughest and, but guys. But is he in the too room. tough for his own good? Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes he, he, he's, uh, he's sometimes too tough for his own good. But here's the thing also he's a very smart guy and he's very, he's very in touch with his body. He's one of the guys who you'll see have a full camp and, you know, unwind his body the right way. And I say that because a lot of athletes, once they, you know, use their body for the event, you know, they're, they're drinking, they're smoking, they're doing all the things, not eating properly, and they're kind of like, like running you. their body through it. Yeah, like, like I used to do back <laughs> in the day. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, 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 I say that because I was one that was like that. It was, it, I was like a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am type thing to my body. I would just, you know, I would, I would train and I would fight, and then afterwards I'll go hang out and party and win. Wait, like during your championship run? I mean, yeah, you'll hang out and you'll party after you win, you know, and you wouldn't, you, what, what I'm saying is I wouldn't hang out and party before I fought. Yeah, yeah, but, but after. afterwards, I, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't cycle my body down. Yeah. What you should do as an athlete, you got to cycle your body down so then that way you're able to then build it back up in a healthy way. Yeah. But if you just continue, if you just go to, you know, to, to you have the event and then just completely fall off the cliff, just yeah. doing whatever you want to do like you didn't have that before then your body, over time, it takes its hold. Yeah, like a Floyd Mayweather or Bernard Hopkins, right? Right. Those yeah. seem to be the two guys who were the most dedicated that I've seen yeah. in combat sports. Yeah, you got, you got to take care of the body. So Luque does that, and it, it offers him a good opportunity to go in there with RDA and really put on a show. I mean, RDA is one of those guys who, who, who just always finds themselves in a main event, um, has an ability to fight you know, great even later in his, in his years, so. Rafael Los Andros has the toughest strength of schedule in the history of the UFC. He, one of them, yeah, for sure. I think the toughest. Yeah, he, he's, he's got, his, his strength of schedule is ridiculous. He was the first guy to fight Khabib. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, he's, he's got a crazy strength of schedule. He'll fight anyone, and he, he should be in the contention for BMF title. 100%. Yeah, he's 100%. that guy, 100%. Like, when people talk about how he pulled out against McGregor and whatever, I'm like, if you knew anything about that guy and all the killers he signed up to face, and you think he passed on his biggest payday, payday. ever right. for no reason, right. you're tripping. Yeah, he had something to be wrong with him.
Yeah. But I mean, with, with RDA, man, um, I expect this fight to just be completely just one one for the ages. You yeah. know, I, I don't, Luke really doesn't know how to be in a not exciting fight. And RDA is one of those guys who's pedal to the metal the moment he gets to the octagon. And both of these guys are Brazilian, so they're going to No, I'm fight excited for the that. grappling. Yeah. I, we've seen Luke walk up some chokes. We saw him against Chiesa. I mean, the same choke that Kevin Holland got him with. But, um, like, underrated grappling. And RDA, we know when he faces a big-time striker, he goes for the grappling, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see them roll. Yeah, and, and it's going to be also interesting to see what Luke can bring in this camp, coming from a camp at Kill Cliff, which was, you know, Sanford and Black Zanes, and they all fought RDA. They trained against yeah. RDA, so they kind of have an idea of what to do against an RDA and what to expect of it. And RDA doesn't give an F because he's just savage. Just, just thug. Nah. Doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, he'll literally fight anyone. Yeah. Yeah, if they, they're, they're like, yo, RDA, like, you got to fight John Jones next he's week. He's with it. He's like, sign me up. Where? He's with it. And, <laughs> and at like 150 or 170, he don't even care. Don't, doesn't matter. Weight class don't matter. Yeah, not at all. Shout yeah. out to RDA. What? Yeah, BMF. I'm Mr. Zach. That's Sugar Shot Evans. You just watched the fight, guys. <laughs>